Hello everybody, I'm Nick and this video I'm going to show you how to write clean and elegant God clauses in C Sharp and .NET by using a new git package called God clauses. This new git package is created by Steve Smith or Ardalis and it really does a lot of things right when it comes down to guarding in general. So I'm going to use it as an example here, but there are other new git packages you might want to use or you might want to write your own. It's just the idea behind the whole guarding thing that you should understand. Now you know how it goes around here, we do support open source quite a bit. So if you like what you see, please go and give a start to the project. It really helps those creators keep going. If you like the content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe and get a notification bell to get alerted when I upload a new video. So let's first explain what God clauses are, because I'm sure you've seen them hundreds of times, but you might not have uh, used them before. So I'm going to go in and create a service and let's create a very a common example. I'm going to call this some service and then I'm going to create an interface in here and call it I test service or something. It doesn't really matter. It won't need an implementation. What I want you to think about is that this some service uh, class has a dependency injected through the constructor and it's a private read only I uh, test service. So very common, this thing would be initialized through dependency injection and then you set it here and you use it uh, down here maybe. So use it in different methods. Now, your some service can't really work with this thing being null. So what you want to say is if the service is null, then throw new argument null exception and you have to specify the name of the parameter. So the service, here you go. And now this thing will throw and it won't continue because this thing should not be null. This is a guard clause. This is a definition of a guard clause. Um, you do an if check early, you short circuit the method, you exit early, um, and that's that. And you're guarding against a bad state potentially in the future of the execution. Now, in this specific context, in constructors, we can actually do the following. We can join this, so we can say that assign it to the service, but if it is null by using the null coalescing operator, then throw a new argument exception. And this is a very nice shorthand way to write this. And actually in C Sharp 10 originally, this thing would have been uh, shorthanded even further to something like this. But unfortunately this feature has been pushed back so we cannot use it yet. So this is how we are now. However, let's say you also want to inject here um, a connection string. So connection string goes here. And again, you would inject that from the constructor. This would be a string, here we go. And what you would do here, you don't just want to check about null, you also want to check about whether this is null or white space. So if connection string, and you're going to say string dot is null or white space, then throw new. And you can either throw an argument null exception, or you can throw the more appropriate argument exception, where you can customize the message and say connection string cannot be uh, empty. Something like that. And then you give it the name of the connection string. Here we go. So for this thing, there isn't a shorthand version. So you just added three lines of code. And by the way, yes, you could remove the curly braces um, and have it look like this. And presumably for some people this is cleaner. For me, it's not. I like my context to be explicit and my scope to be explicit. So for that reason, I prefer uh, to have them. But even then you have two lines of code that are, to be honest, one too many. And then you have the assignment. So how can we clean this up? Well, actually, let me show you a different example and let's try to refactor that different example. So let's say we have this order class here, which has um, four private fields, the name, the quantity, the max, and then the unit price. And then in the constructor, when we initialize that object, we have to have those uh, fields because they're mandatory. And since we don't want to just check for nullability, we want to check for arguments, our code to guard against a bad state looks like this. Now, many of you might look at this and say, hey, Nick, this is validation. This logic should not be here. Uh, this should actually be in its own validator. And before you even create an order, you should validate against that. There is truth to that, but it really depends to how you structure your application. In a more DDD scenario, this is a totally acceptable thing. The domain object uh, should know what is a good or a bad state. And actually even methods later, if you wanna do something with the order, it could have its own guarding as well. So this is not something unprecedented. Actually, if you take a look at uh, Steve Smith's uh, clean architecture project, he's using uh, guard clauses in the way I'm going to show you in a second 
quite heavily in the domain object because it, it just makes sense. So how do we make this better? Because this is a bit bloated. Well, I'm going to go ahead and go to NuGet and search for guard closes. And I'm going to find this package, Ardalis dot guard closes i'm gonna add it and let's see how we can make this better ultimately we want this to be in one line so instead of doing this what we can do now is we can say well we, we want to make sure that the name is not uh, null or empty or white space so what you say is uh, underscore name equals god this is a class that exists in that package dot again so we want to guard against something and what we want to guard against is we're going to guard against null or white space where on the name with what parameter name name of name and that's it now this null or white space will actually produce the exact same message so we don't need to specify it if we wanted to have something custom we could do it here we can say this is a custom message totally fine but if we don't god closes by default will give a friendly uh, message to our exception here and by the way you know how i feel about exceptions this is not just returning this will throw an exception However, in that context, again, it is assumed that you have some sort of um, exception handling mechanism that will take that and convert it into an appropriate error message for the user. So in that context, it makes sense. Um, so we can now delete that. And now all those lines look like this. Nice, clean, elegant. We can do the same with quantity. So quantity, we want to make sure that it's not less or equal to zero. Again, I can say quantity equals God our entry point against and we want to guard against negative or zero and we have a method to do that so the input is quantity and the name of is quantity again cream that method we don't need it anymore moving on max so this if it's zero then the amount cannot be zero so what do we do well we say max equals god dot against zero we are guarding against zero. It reads very nicely. It's a very nice way to go about it. And we have, again, max as the value and name of max here. So that can go away. And last but not least, we want to guard against um, a negative here. So we can say unit price equals guard against negative. Simple as that. Unit price, name of unit price. Here we go. And now, as you can see, this is way more readable, way cleaner, way more elegant. We are guarding against those things. And if they're wrong, an exception will happen. Now, you might be looking at this and saying, hey, Nick, now I'm adding this code here. What is this code doing behind the scenes? It might be less performant when actually it's not. If we take a look at what this code is doing behind the scenes, it will just do similar um, guard checks that you would do anyway. So if input is string.empty, if is null, if is null or empty, depending on the context. So there's nothing fancy happening in here. It just wraps around a lot of that logic that would introduce a lot of lines in your code for no specific reason. And that means that if you want to write your own God clauses or you want to use a separate NuGet package that does the same thing, you can totally can. It's up to you. So you can extend this in any way you want. You can even extend this package because against returns an I got clause and you can write an extension method for that God clause and then use it at your own liking well that's what i want to show you in this video very nice very short very sweet remember go give it a start on github if you like what you see it can really make a difference for those people maintaining those packages that's all i had for you for this video thank you very much for watching special thanks to my patreons for making this videos possible if you want to support me as well you're gonna find the link in the description down below leave a like if you like this video subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well and i'll see you in the next video keep coding